Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera, and today we're going to be learning how to check and replace your disc brake pads. What else has brakes? Airplanes? Trains? Do airplanes have brakes? Probably. <laughs> For this task, you will need Allen keys or needle nose pliers. And if you have them, a digital caliper, but it's not necessary. If you do need to replace the pads, what you're gonna need is your new pads, obviously, a bleed funnel, flathead screwdriver, and probably more hydraulic mineral oil. So basically your brake pads are going to wear down as you ride little bits of them are going to rub off on the rotors. Friction between the brake pad and the rotor. So obviously the brake pad will over time wear down, same as on a car or really anything else with brakes. How fast that happens depends a lot on the kind of terrain you ride, your riding style, how fast you're going, the conditions, whether you do have the metallic or the, what are the other ones even called? Resin metallic or resin pads, the resin ones do wear out a little bit faster. If your brakes are squeaking or grinding or making metal on metal noises, that's bad, all those things are bad. It may not mean you need to replace the pads, they may be contaminated, they may not be properly bedded in, but if you're getting any noises like that, stop, if you still can, <laughs> and check your brake pads. First thing we're gonna do is a visual examination. <laughs> so sometimes you can tell by looking right in here if things are have gotten really dire, you might be able to tell that there's no brake pad left at all. However, we recommend just popping the brake pads out. It's super easy and you get a much better idea of what's going on. You are going to remove your wheel. <laughs> And we're gonna grab our three mil, pop off this widget. Do you see our name? I think it does. I feel like people told us in the comments when we did a different break one what the name was. I don't remember. Yeah, the it's name. a widget. You really don't need to know its name to take it on and off. It's pretty easy. If your brakes do not have a bolt, they have a cotter pin. So that's where you'll use the needle nose pliers to bend back to one side, pull that out, be in the same spot. Let us pull this out. So she can see Sid squeezing the pads together and pulling them out. There's this little clip that I would like to not drop on the ground. Yes, there's that little spring. This spring holds the two brake pads apart. If it's really bad, it's pretty easy to tell. If you can see any of this back plate, that is bad news bears. Or if this spring has been worn down at all, that means that you're actually contacting the spring with your rotor, Which and that's really bad. You can technically run your brake pads until you have a millimeter of brake pad left. So this little guy is about half a millimeter. So if you have less than double that thing, that's one way to tell, which actually looks about where we are here. Or you can just use the calipers and measure. So measure the back plate first. Mm, I see. 1.04. We go out, we measure the whole thing. 3.28. So you have about two millimeters of brake pad here. So that one should be fine. Once you've measured these with the calipers a couple times, you can probably just tell by looking at it. We're gonna go ahead and replace these anyway because Nike goes through brake pads really fast. That's not gonna last much longer. So if you're looking at this and the spring is anywhere close to the pad or the end of the pad, you should replace this because if the spring starts hitting on your rotor or if the back plate starts hitting on your rotor, you're going to also ruin your rotor. And rotors are more expensive than brake pads. That's another one of those reasons why it's good to keep on top of the brake pads because that will make your whole brake system last longer. If you pull out your pads and they look like this, but there's plenty of pad left. If you look at this, this has much more pad than Mackie had on there. We don't need to measure it. We can tell by looking. These are severely contaminated pads. What had happened here is the caliper was leaking fluid. These are probably not salvageable. We do have a video that we will post up there about how to save your brakes if they are slightly contaminated or if they just didn't get bedded in properly. So basically you just sort of sand them down and re-bed them in. But these ones are done. Dunzo, so you will also need to replace your brake pads if they look like this. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully they don't, because that means something's wrong with your brake. So the first step in replacing 
anything on your bike is getting the right thing to replace it with. So you can see here on the brake pads, this one says Shimano Wright NO4C metal. So that's how you know what brake pad you should get. So this is NO4C. These are for a road disc system. So they say KO4TI. They also look nothing alike. So that would be your first hint, but <laughs> like just in case, check the numbers. Why? Do different brakes have different brake pads? These are the single piston ones and yeah. then these are the double piston, which makes sense if you look at it because there's only enough room for one piston there. And these ones have two. You can change type of brake pads. Let's say that you've been running metal brake pads and you want to try running resin or vice versa. Right. The problem is when you change brake pad types, you have to re-bed your rotors for that type. So it's generally best to just stick with whatever you've been running so that you don't have to go through that hassle. So we can go ahead and compare these. You, yeah, you're about halfway through the pad. As your brake pads wear out, there's obviously more space between the brake pad and the rotors. Your pistons will have moved in. So if you shove new brake pads in there, there's not gonna be space. They're just gonna sit on the rotor and it's gonna go. So you need to push out the pistons. Well, let's look real quick at the pistons. This side over here, there's what? Millimeter, millimeter and a half between it and the caliper. Well, when you put new brake pads in, you want some of that space back. So to do that, obviously it is a closed system. So we're gonna make it not a closed system. We're gonna open the bleed port. So I'm gonna grab my Allen key and level this guy up. So if you don't have a bleed funnel, A, you should get one because lever bleeds are awesome. It's like 10 bucks or something. If you don't have a bleed funnel, you can still do this by opening up this port and then just putting a paper towel or a rag over this to catch any excess fluid that gets pushed out. But it's better to do it with a uh, bleed funnel and a little bit of fluid in there. So we're gonna pop some fluid in here because it needs, ooh, that was more than I wanted to do. So once again, Sid is doing this. She's opening up this because it is a closed system. So when you push the pistons back out, you're displacing fluid and you want a place for that fluid to displace. So we're gonna have it displace into the funnel. I always get a little nervous with doing this. You wanna proceed somewhat cautiously because you don't wanna crack your pistons. What I would recommend is use the old brake pads oh. to push the pistons back out. Okay. So we pop the brake pads back in. We're using the old ones, obviously, because you don't want to be. And then we're just going to give it a little gentle push. And that's easier from the bottom usually, but oh, really? you can do it wherever. Since we aren't trying to save these pads, you can twist the screwdriver to force both sides out at the same time instead of oh, I see. prying right. like back and forth. I see what you're saying, yeah, because that would, would ruin the pads, but they're done anyway. That's why we're doing this with the old ones. Oh yeah, this side at least is way farther in. Yeah, that's much better. So you can see how the pads are very close to flush on both sides now. That's what you want. Now it is time to put the new pads in. Depending on the brake pads, some of these have a left and a right on the spring as well as on the pad. So you have right, the right pad is going to need to go with the right spring. These ones, it doesn't matter which side of the spring. It does matter which side of the brake, but we'll get to that in a second. So the spring just goes around the brake pad and then the other one sits on top and they kind of sandwich together. I like a little mouth. Hi, my name is Brake Pads. What does that spring do? Keeps them from just being locked on either side of the rotor all the time. Yeah, so if you don't have a spring, your brake pads will be rubbing continuously on your rotor. They'll still work properly, but they will just be constantly rubbing, which is very annoying. Right, left. We're paying attention to the instructions. And then we're just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. So the thing to make sure about, which Sid obviously did correctly here, is that the either cotter pin or bolt, depending on what your it's bicycle through has. through all the holes. Yeah, through the hole on this pad and that pad and through the hole in the spring because otherwise the spring can fall out, which is not good. You also, add. you add this thing because then your bolt can't fall out. 
Because if the bulb falls out, then everything falls out. Should we tell the story about your dad? Yeah, my dad did that. In, we were doing an enduro race on, our, on his property. And in one of the stages, his rear brake pads fell out at the top. <laughs> Still made it down somehow. You can tell by looking at it that there's plenty of space for the rotor right now. We have pushed the pistons out far enough, but it isn't centered. So we're going to center the brake real quick. We have a whole video that goes very in depth into all the ways to stop your brake from rubbering, rubbering, rubbering. We will put a link to that. Um, I'm pretty sure the simple way is going to work for this because it's pretty close. So we're just going to undo these bolts, spin, and then Mackie's going to grab the brake lever for me. Retighten these. What if this rotor's not straight? It sort of sounds like it might not be. Yeah, if you have a rub that's only happening in one spot. Usually means your rotor's not straight. Voila. At this stage, we are going to do a quick lever bleed. It definitely looks like Mackie needs to do a full bleed on this bike because it's gross, but this will get it feeling good. Now that you've got your new pads in, you will need to bed them in. You'll want to find a nice gradual hill and slowly pull the brakes to about 75%. So not stopping all the way, repeat that hill a couple times until you get full braking power. And this is how to check and replace your brake pads in one minute. Remove your wheel, then remove the clip and bolt or cotter pin. Then squeeze the pads together and pull up to remove them from the caliper. Using a digital caliper, measure the width of the pad material. If less than one millimeter or about twice the width of the spring, it's time to replace the pads. To replace the pads, remove the bleed screw on the lever of the brake whose pads you are replacing. If you have a brake bleed funnel, attach it with a bit of mineral oil. If not, cover the bleed port with a blue towel or clean rag. Put the old pads back into the caliper and use a flathead screwdriver to press them apart, pushing the pistons back into the caliper. Remove the old brake pads and insert the new ones, making sure that the spring is correctly installed and the pads are in the correct orientation. Reinsert the bolt and clip or cotter pin, then the wheel. If you are using the brake bleed funnel, do a quick lever bleed, then remove the funnel and reinstall the bleed screw. Pump the brake a few times to make sure it is working properly, then head outside to bed in the new brake pads and you're ready to ride.